NC State men's basketball went down to Oxford on Tuesday for a big-time matchup with Old Miss, but simply left Oxford with a big old Miss opportunity. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Happy Wednesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. NC State men's basketball had their ACC-SEC matchup game on Tuesday evening down in Oxford, taking on the Rebels of Old Miss. This was a big chance for NC State basketball to not only pick up a good win for the resume this season, but as I tweeted earlier in the day on Tuesday, these are the types of games that Kevin Keats has to win in order to start turning corners at this program. And what did they do after that? They went down to Mississippi and got absolutely embarrassed. Lost by a 20 spot, 72 to 52. To be honest with you, Kenton, the game was pretty much over after about four or five minutes in the first half. It happened that quickly. I disagree. I think that this team had a chance. Going into halftime, we were down, what, seven points or so? Eight. Eight points. It didn't feel that close, though, to be honest with you. Here's the deal. It didn't feel close because our offense was absolutely stagnant. I mean, there was more clanging and banging than one of the Rock's workout videos. It just was every time you looked up, you were hearing thoink, thoink, thoink. It was like, what is what is happening right now? I mean, we shot horrendously out from from three. We we put up a tour date, I'm pretty sure. What was the actual uh, <laughs> final result there? It was three of 25 from three-point land. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to a town near you on <laughs> March 25th, the Wolfpack men's basketball team, because that's, that's what happened there. And it's not just that we were forcing up bad shots. We were missing open ones, too. Yeah, it was when when there was the opportunity to knock down a big shot that would get us back into the game, that would swing momentum, that would quiet the crowd. Clank. I mean, for Christ's sake, I was looking for Ratchet with all the clanks that were going on there. It, it just was a really tough time for this Wolfpack team in terms of scoring, and we saw many weaknesses that we already knew existed, kind of exposed. We talked about, we've talked about at nauseum how. Um, we needed to see more Mo DR minutes. And why was that? Because we lack length and athleticism inside. DJ Burns, for all the amazing things that he is, for all that he gives you in the footwork, for all that he gives you in the post offensively, defensively, he's not your prototypical five. He's just not. He's not a great rim protector. He doesn't play passing lanes super well. He doesn't defend on ball on the perimeter particularly well. And he struggled a little bit tonight. And that's not to say DJ is a bad player. It's not to say, hey, I don't like DJ or anything like that. We, we love DJ here. We know what he's bringing offensively. However, he's hitting that struggle, that that point that I said, this is where Terquavion Smith will show himself to be an NBA player or not. When your shot's not falling, can you positively affect the game still? And in this game, he struggled to do so. Yeah. In this game, certainly the answer was no. It was a very rough night for DJ. Just looked completely out of his element. And it kind of gave me flashes back to the Creighton game that we played in the NCAA tournament last year. When DJ was up against Ryan Kalkbrenner, who has a superior height advantage, DJ simply had nothing for him. Jamari and Sharp for Old Miss tonight, seven foot five. So again, a very similar height disadvantage for DJ, more of the same problems. Could not find any type of touch around the rim. Again, like you mentioned, did virtually nothing for us defensively. If you can't move your feet quick enough, it results to lazy fouls. Just can't get in position correctly. Jamin Brakefield for Old Miss dominated D 
DJ Burns tonight. And that's something that you hate to see as a Wolfpack fan, because if you remember back in the spring, Brakefield was a kid that had entered the transfer portal from Old Miss, looked around, was linked to NC State for a hot minute, and then decided to ultimately stay at Old Miss and play for Chris Beard here in year one. Wouldn't you know it, fast forward to tonight, and he is the one that dominates NC State. I believe he had a career high in points. Brakefield, up until this point, of course, had not been having that great of a year either. So in addition to a familiar face hurting you, it was also a turn somebody into a hero type night for NC State. So just a super, super disappointing effort from NC State. I believe, and maybe I sound crazy after what we just witnessed, I think we're a better team than Ole Miss is. I think we just came out and completely no-showed. Got off the bus, had absolutely nothing for him. It looked like we basically just continued that second half of the BYU game in Vegas. Maybe we thought we were still in Vegas tonight because that is the sort of effort that we got out there from the jump had absolutely no juice. Old Miss took advantage of what they were given out the gate. They were aggressive, and then ultimately they just never looked back, never really gave them much of a fight after that. And so the the rotations tonight were slow. Ball movement was lackluster. Of course, everything sucks when you can't hit a shot to save your life. Only shot, I think it was like 30% overall, but as we mentioned, 3 of 25 from deep. You're not going to beat probably anyone putting up numbers like that. So maybe this is just the one-off. Maybe this is the anomaly from what we've seen so far. Watch the tape one time, burn that tape, and then just flush it all out of your system before you see Boston College to start some ACC play this weekend. But just super disappointing in the opportunity that was at stake here. Again, playing an SEC team on the road, it would look very good on the resume. I don't think Old Miss is still anything to write home about. They dominated us tonight, that's for sure. But I wouldn't expect to see anything special out of Old Miss this year. So this is an extremely winnable game and just look completely disinterested. Grayson, you're my guy. I love you to death. I love you to the moon and back. I think you're a little bit delusional there. Oh, I what? think that uh, in the terms of we we are the better team here. No, seriously. Uh, let me let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I understand that we no showed in many ways. I understand that you know obviously twelve percent from three, fifty eight percent from the free throw line, all that good stuff is never really going to amount to much for you. But this this Ole Miss team has a ton of length, has a ton of experience, and they just looked really balanced tonight. They looked really balanced. There was tons of folks chipping in and, and doing the thing in terms of scoring and all that. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying – or there are tons, tons of folks chipping in in many different ways beyond scoring, rather. Um, but the the thing that I look at and I say to myself, you know, this is kind of – this game is not an indictment on this team as a whole. Yeah. And and I, I, I truly need people to understand that. I truly – I know that there's a contingency that says, oh, my God, the sky is falling when you have a terrible loss like this. Do I think that we are closer of a team to Ole Miss than we showed tonight? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But let's not go into sky falling, panic mode and all that. That's a team that looked well coached. They looked disciplined. They looked very good. They were longer. They were more athletic. They were more active. And they hit more shots than us tonight. So with that being said, you know, hats off to them. How do you bounce back? How do you bounce back? How does Keats and company bounce back to open up ACC play here? That's what needs to be important. In a game like this, you throw up, you you watch the tape one time, ball it up, throw it away, get on to the next one. Because I truly believe in my heart of hearts, I truly believe that this team can go on to, to make the tournament and firmly be in, not just bubble contention like we've been in the last few years and, and possibly do something special, but they have to clean up some of those things that we knew were going to be problems coming into the season. You have to have more rim protection than you had tonight. Ole Miss got whatever they wanted at the cup. I mean, it was just, it was a bit embarrassing for NC State in terms of the inability to stop dribble penetration. And then when guys got to the rim, the inability to make it difficult on scores to, to finish. It was just, it was a, it was a tough time. This is one of those games that you just, again, you ball it up, throw it away. 
NC State tonight, they were out coached, they were out hustled, they were out shot, they were out schemed. I think they were out athleticismed as well. But I truly do think if these two teams play 10 times, I think NC State probably wins seven of them. I think tonight was just one of those three. Just and it was a bad one of those three. It was a horrible loss. I'm not I'm not sugarcoating the loss. It was bad. We looked terrible and we were outplayed in nearly every extent. But yeah. like you mentioned, Kenton, I don't think that this is an indictment, a further indictment on this season, especially if you choose to flush this now, get it out of your system, and get back up to speed this weekend against Boston College, maybe this will be a one-off. Time will tell. There is the common saying, you know, turning one loss into two. It feels like that second half of the BYU loss bled yeah. into tonight, and so that turned into two losses here effectively. But – Overall, disappointing night. This was a must-win game, as I mentioned, and had no interest in doing so. So onward we go. We got Boston College coming up on Saturday. How will we rebound? Literally, that is the million-dollar question. Up next, we're going to be talking about Kevin Concepcion signing with Savage Wolves for 2024 and the impact that will have on recruiting this offseason. Our first sponsor of the day is Prize Picks. Prize picks is simply the most fun you can have winning up to 25 times your money this football and now basketball season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. With basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball using the Specials League. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. So, for example, you can choose LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions. If you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Scholes, you can now find community plays under the Promos tab. These are entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every week. And of course, not to mention, Prize Picks even offers their reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So head on over to prizepicks.com slash lockedoncollege and use code lockedoncollege for a first deposit match up to $100. prizepicks.com slash lockedoncollege and use code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. Back here for a little KC Concepcion talk here in the middle portion of today's show. Christmas came earlier for Wolfpack football fan. KC Concepcion has announced that he has signed with Savage Wolves for the twenty twenty four season, meaning he will be locked down, staying in Raleigh for at least another year. I know. I mean, personally. I didn't have much worry that he was going anywhere. I'm not sure if you did either, Kenton. I know I think the tendency of NC State fans is to expect the worst, so I understand why some folks were a little bit apprehensive about having such a dynamic playmaker going into such an impactful transfer portal season. But for NC State to go ahead and beat the transfer portal window and get KC locked in for 2024, how important is that for NC State? this off season. Uh, so I understand everybody's excitement about the official announcement and all that, because, you know, Casey is a young man. That's he's phenomenal. Let's just be honest, right. Led the team in, in pretty much every category possible. Um, or I believe he did lead the team in every category possible for receiving. And even in rushing, he was our leading rusher for multiple games as well. I get it. I really do. I understand the excitement about him coming back. Um, I also don't like the fact that there's so much excitement about him coming back for this reason. There was never any serious talk or doubt of him leaving. There was never any serious. We got to stop this. You, We can't have nice things mentality. Stop it. Stop. Stop being surprised that you work a good job and you get a good paycheck every two weeks. You've earned that. You've earned that right. You show up to work and do your thing. This team, although everything wasn't perfect, what more could KC have asked for? He was featured in almost every way possible. He was schemed open. 
I showed you how three of his 10 touchdowns were a direct result of scheming him open. And so we kind of got to live in this land of this is who we are and we're only going to get better. Not in this world of like, oh, we we can't have eight, nine wins a year. This is making me uneasy. Oh, we can't compete for ACC championships. We can't have players who are playoff caliber. Oh, stop it. Stop. We have him. We deserve him. He deserves us. We're doing great things together. Let that rock. But KC being back, absolutely great. Savage Wolves, they're doing what they do again. Donate what you can, right? Be it the 1,000, be it 100, be it the 3920, be it 392, be it whatever you can give. Donate what you can because that's what's helping us secure and, and keep uh, big-time players like KC. But, you know, shout-out to Savage Wolves. Shout-out to KC. It's it's happiness all the way around here. NC State going ahead and getting him locked in was the absolute smartest thing they could have done because now you use your most dynamic playmaker and you have him as a bargaining chip once you enter this portal season. And again, we're going to have to go out and get more playmakers out of the portal. We're probably going to need one, probably two quarterbacks. You're going to need a running back. You're going to need probably another wide receiver or two, some offensive linemen. So you have a lot of promise to sell these guys in a guy like Casey Concepcion. You have one of the best players in the ACC this year. Of course, he made second team. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But – so much promise and just such a young freshman having yeah. one of the best receiving seasons ever in NC State history makes NC State an attractive spot for some talent because you've got a guy like that you can come play alongside. And I think an interesting point to this is that getting KC locked in, to me, that indicates that State's going to be spending a little bit of moolah on a higher caliber quarterback as well because you're going to want a quarterback that consistently – get the ball to KC and in the hands of others as well. So this move I think is telling, but ultimately this move was super intelligent. I am very excited they did get this done. The only thing I will say about this whole announcement thing, I'm still not loving that you have to announce that you're staying. I know that's just the reality of how this thing works now. It just, I don't know. It, it, it rubs me a little bit of the wrong way. I feel like. I mean, I, I don't think it was an announcement that he was saying staying so much as like, hey, he's uh, locked up with with you know Savage Wolves and IL and all well, that, or no, he's I, agreed up or yeah. whatever the case may be. But I I I do agree with you in that the excitement surrounding it is a little odd. Like, and again, Wolfpack Nation, I'm not saying that you're wrong to be excited about retaining a young man like this. I'm saying expect good things. That's all I'm saying. Expect things to work out in your favor. Expect, and I understand how many times you've had your heart broken. I know most of you all yeah. have been NC State fans and diehards a lot longer than I have. I will give you that. I'm not going to deny that. Not going to say I was born in the NC State fandom. I wasn't. I wasn't. I'm not, not going to lie to you like that. But what I do know is that the best teams, the teams that win championships, the teams that do all the things, it's an expectation of that. It's not a uh, oh my God, I'm shocked that we're good. It's a, hey, yeah, we locked up our guy. Good. Let's go win. Let's go lock up some more guys because there are some guys that are in the portal and even some guys who are talking to guys in the portal that, uh, you know, I mean, hey, Riley, uh, Riley is waiting on you. You know, Riley's, I'm just saying, you know. I, or should you say home is waiting on you? Yeah, yeah. Listen. Like coaches can't tamper, but we can. <laughs> we can. Mr. Brown from USF. Come on back, brother. Come on back. We can use you. And you know who you can reunite with here? No, I know you hate it up there. I know the way North Carolinians talk about cold weather, I know you hate it up in Ohio. Come on back. Come on back, man. Come on back. You see what our freshmen did this year? Imagine what you would have did if you were with them. Imagine. Ima we were looking. Our offensive coordinator was asking for folks to be relevant when their number was called. I'm sure you would have been relevant. I'm sure your number would have been called. I'm just saying. We got the ball to Juice Marine. We tried to get it to him as much as we could. Come on. Come on back, brother. Come on back. Yeah, locking in a guy like Kevin Concepcion here, it just makes for a very fun portal experience that we're probably going to get here in the coming week. I think it's going to be a very fun and entertaining portal season, not so much a stressful portal season because you get the you get the stressful part out of the way by locking in your best player to come back so 
Fact. It's going to be interesting who emerges as guys that want to play here with KC Concepcion because at this point, why wouldn't you? A guy like KC brings up the entire level of the offense. And again, Robert and I is another piece of this. Demonstrated all year that if you are a dynamic playmaker, Anai will get the ball into your hands. Plenty, of snaps, you- plenty of snaps to go around here after the portal comes and goes. And I'm going to tell you this, okay? And I mean this very genuinely. I've seen both of these guys in person. I've seen both of them play in person. We got a guy coming in that's actually that, – and this is not to say Kevin Concepcion is not meant for the role that he played because he played it phenomenally all season. We got a guy coming in that's um, a lot like Concepcion, just bigger and more straight line speed in terms of Jonathan Paler. Boy, defenses are going to be put into some. I, I can only imagine. I know, I know Robert and I is salivating. He's foaming at the mouth. He is, oh boy, he's going to be like a, 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 a ferret on the first day of hunting season. He's ready. He's ready. He's, oh, I just know. He's just dreaming and wishing and hoping of the different things he can do with those two pieces uh, coming together because they're, they're both phenomenal ball players. Uh, so, you know, this this team, there's some talent coming in. There's some talent already here. You know, I'm interested to see what we do in the portal because there are needs. There are needs. There are going to be some folks who need to be replaced. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Up next, we're going to round out our Wednesday show with some discussions on the all ACC teams that were announced and how the Wolfpack was represented after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even faster and easier. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Rounding out our Wednesday show here, as mentioned, we had the all ACC football teams announced on Tuesday. We had four representatives from the NC state Wolfpack shows. First teamer was no doubt linebacker Peyton Wilson. He was also the top overall vote getter. Who was the one? that didn't vote Peyton first team. Who was the one? That's what I want to know. I'd like to know because I want to know by what criteria there were four first team linebackers and one of you looked at those four slots and said Peyton Wilson is not one of the best four linebackers in this conference. I would very seriously and and I, I mean this with everything in my heart and soul. I would like to hear your argument that there was one better. Yeah. One. I don't want to hear you try to tell me that there are two, because at that point, I'm going to tell you to put down the drugs. We're going to infiltrate the dealer, find the suppliers, and cut it off. Okay? That's, that's going to be me and Grace's goal at that point. Three? Three? Oh, you just hate you hate Peyton. What did he do to That's you? That's all it is. Yes. What did he do to you? Four? You're an unserious human being. You're an unserious. There is not a world. There is not a world where there were four linebackers in this conference that deserved it not over him. So the person who didn't give him that first team vote, I hope that your voting privileges are removed next year because that that is yin yang and riff raff at its worst or at its finest, whichever way you want to put it. Peyton Wilson not only being the top overall vote getter, I think that's indicative of the ACC Defensive Player of the Year voting as well. I mean, that only tracks to me. If he's the overall vote getter, I think it's going to be pretty obvious who the best overall defensive player is 
as well. But for that to not be unanimous is extremely unserious. I, again, yeah. I don't know what you were watching this year if you think Peyton Wilson is anything but a first-team All-ACC player. So who knows? Who knows who that might be? But I hope a bird poops on their car every single day for the rest of the year. I hope every pop they drink is shaken up from now to the end of eternity. <laughs> what a ridiculous, ridiculous decision to vote him anywhere else. He is yeah. ultimately deserving of every single award that he's up for this offseason. So he is mm-hmm. first team all ACC. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Second team, wide receiver Casey Concepcion landed on the second team. Are you surprised that he's second team and not first team? Um, this one, I, I kind of get because they're this year in the ACC, the receiver depth was kind of insane, yeah. right? Like you have a six, four monster of a human being returning punts, returning punts in Keon Coleman, Malik Washington was very much so Virginia's offense at multiple points in time. And we saw it in our game. There was nothing that anybody could do with Malik at any point in time. And Xavier Restrepo, I think that's the guy that you could. That's the guy that you could kind of make the argument for. Not going to say that I, I I completely would say, oh, Xavier, um, it that Casey over Xavier is all day, every day, because Xavier Restrepo was second in the, the ACC in receiving yards. But I do want to bring this up. Casey was second in the ACC in receiving touchdowns. Do you know who came in first? That 6'4 monster of a receiver, Keon Cole. Yeah. In terms of the, the things that he did this year, right? Third overall in receptions. The only two people in front of him, Xavier Estrepo and Malik Washington. In terms of everything that Concepcion meant to this team, right? Because you could say, well, Casey was seventh in yards, so it tracks. But then you'd have to add in his rushing yards as well, which kind of, make that a little bit more even, but either way you cut it, either way you slice it, either way you look at it, I think that he should have been, he could have had an argument for first team, but I, I'm not mad at second team. Yeah. So we agree here. I think that he has an argument probably over Restrepo, like you mentioned, but I'm okay with KC at second team here. I think he's certainly deserving as such. I'm okay with him being placed on second team here because also you look at it this way as if he needed any more motivation going into next year. After having a dynamite first season here, he's going to have some room to improve upon that. So if this is something that pushes him forward and makes him a better receiver next year, make him third team, make him honorable mention, whatever it takes. Get him fired up. I'd love to see him fired up, but I, I don't have a problem with second team here for KC. He's had an incredible season, but there have been also very solid receivers around the ACC as well. All in all, I, I'm cool with it here. And then last, third team all ACC, we have offensive tackle Anthony Belton and cornerback Aiden White. Any surprises for you here? Aiden White being third team is criminal. It's criminal. And let me tell you why. He might have been a guy who got off to a bit of a slow start. He might have been a guy that got off to a bit of a slow start. And a lot like I was talking about with Belton. But Belton picked it up and got like, he was he was better than he was in the second half of the season. Aiden White, this man locked down everything. Yeah. Everything. I want to present one game and one game only as my argument for why he is what he is, why I think he um belongs in that tier, why I think there is no argument, there is nothing to be said other than he's one of those ones. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to some and introduce to others the young man that had everybody named Mama writing letters, Tez Walker. Tez was one of the best receivers in the ACC this year. I don't think anybody's debating that. I don't think anybody's arguing, oh, no, he wasn't that. Like, I think that that's an objective fact. Although he does not have the total volume of numbers because he did not play multiple games, there is no logical or reasonable way that somebody could say to me, hey, um, he didn't belong in terms of of what he did for the the rest of the season when he played. That's all the nice things I'm going to say about somebody who wears baby blue. I don't really care for the dirty foot guys. But the reality is Aiden White had that man in hell. In 
hell in a way that nobody else did, including the cornerback that I think is most overrated in the conference and possibly in the nation in Wiggins from Clemson. If you look at Aiden White and what he did against Tez Walker, Tez Walker, he reached virtually all of his season lows in this game. Almost every single one came in this particular game. And, and and nobody really sees that as a moment to say, well, wait a minute now, hold on. Did Aiden White put up a great job here? Did he do something phenomenal here? Because I think that it's, it's very clear. I don't think that you can make too many arguments for, oh, man, this guy isn't it. Because, again, you had Tez Walker to his low in the season in terms of receptions. This is the lowest amount of receptions he had when he played any game at two. His lowest long of any game in 21 yards, except for the first game that he played against Syracuse. Yes, he scored one touchdown, but even that one touchdown was not on Aiden White. They lined him up in the slot to get him away from Aiden White, who had him in hell. So, I mean, I I don't understand it. I don't get it. And Tony, in Tony Gibson's defense, your corners have to be, have to be at least good. But the defense really relies on how good they can be because if you cannot trust them to be on an island, you can't run this defense. And Aiden White, he absolutely owned that island. He absolutely said, hey, I don't care what y'all say about people shouldn't be able to purchase this much land. This is mine. This side of the field, wherever I am, that's mine. So, you know, him being 13, I think that's a little embarrassing. Yeah, I believe he is second team at absolute minimum. I do think, like you mentioned, he got off to a little bit of a slower start this season, but as yeah. the season went on, he went right back into 2022 Aiden White mode, and that is people stopped trying him because he was shutting down an entire side of the field. You mentioned that Tez Walker game, even in games before that. You talked about Xavier Restrepo for Miami. Aiden White completely took away Restrepo in our game against Miami. He took away Tez Walker in the UNC game, took away Jamari Thrash in the Louisville game, so Aiden White doesn't exactly get the recognition he deserves here. He's deserving of being recognized, that is for sure. Uh, you know, yeah. third team, I guess at this point it is what it is, but Aiden White is still very much Aiden White that you saw last year giving up, I, I believe it was the most coverage snaps without a touchdown in 2022. Wasn't mm -hmm. quite at that level here in 2023, but of late he has really returned to that form. So whatever he chooses to stay or to go, he's taken a whole lot of talent with him. He didn't have garbage time. I have to throw up a Hail Mary interceptions. His interception against UVA, they were driving. They were looking to make, I believe they could have taken the lead on that drive. And what happens? Oh, no, there's Aiden White. Miami game, they're in the red zone. He was quoted after the game and saying they can get turnovers, they can get down to the red zone, they can get close, but if you can't get in the end zone, I mean, what can you do? Yeah, He's the reason for the question, what can you do? Yeah, Because he's there. Ladies and gentlemen, watch the games. Because that young man is, as the kids today say, one of them ones. That will do it for us here on Wednesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Get the comments in the comment box and tell us what you thought about the basketball game Tuesday night down in Oxford. Tell us how you feel about KC signing to Savage Wolves for 2024. And tell us what you think about the All-ACC. Do you think there's anyone that was ripped off? Would you like to know who the non-unanimous voter was against Peyton Wilson? I certainly would like to know. Thank you all so much for all of the support. Until tomorrow, go Pack. Go Pack.